If you wish you had a dad or you wish your dad was me, just send me an email, it's as easy as can be. I'll answer all your questions, I won't miss a beat. It's Dad, dad Talks with Voice Over P. Tonight's a little different because I don't normally have an audience during a dad talk. And to have Josh's uh, girlfriend here, of course, Josh, my son here, that's um, something I've never had the privilege. So thank you both for being here and having a little campfire in this great majestic land, uh, Colorado. I thought, how fun would it be to sit around and have a campfire and, uh, and just share a little bit back and forth. So what I would like to do and typically do during a dad talk is just read a couple of the emails that we get. So the first one I wanted to share with everybody, um, I'll, I'll call him and Andy. I'll call him Andy. And he, t- he titles this thing, The Friend Zone. I try to get a girlfriend, but I get friend zoned. Okay, I call this the Heisman. It's where the other person sticks out their arms, stiff arms you, and blocks you. You're not, you're not alone, Andy. I'll read on. Do you have any tips on how to get one since you were probably swooning all the girls when you were in high school? Thank you very much, Pete. Also, where'd you grow up in Chicago? I'm from the South Burbs. Andy, I grew up way on the northwest side near O'Hare. So, um, this thing, uh, first and foremost, All of our relationships are based on some sort of friendship, okay? Whether it's family or it's outside of family, whether it's a best buddy or or the opposite sex. So you want to establish that friendship as the foundation. It's not about the attraction. Those will typically not last, I, I guarantee it. And I bore you with the details, statistics, but they don't. So you want it here on the friendship level. Now, Andy, flip this around. Don't search for a girlfriend. Search for a friend and be one to that girl. That's where you start. And if it goes in that direction, great. Now here's, here's the next thing. Take risks. It's a risk to put your heart out there and say, here's the way I feel. He or she may not feel the same way and that's okay because you're going to gain some respect here because you went ahead you put it on the table and they may not initially um, they may take some steps backward initially but down the road they're going to respect you and if nothing else you're going to respect you and that's huge don't be I, I hate to say this don't be too hurt when you step out and put it out there and hope he or she is gonna like you because this is a two-way street. There's no obligation on the other side to feel that same way. And certainly, you know, in Andy's case, if a girl were to come to you, Andy, and say, hey, and she takes a risk and says, I feel this way. And you look at her and go, I'm sorry, I got nothing. That's okay. Treat her with respect and that's all right for now because down the road, you two can still be friends, and that's all right, as long as you treat her in a respectful uh, way like you would want to be treated. So take big risks. That's okay. You're going to get approached to by somebody someday. They're going to express their feelings, and you're not going to feel the same way. So that expect that too. But either way, establish everything on a good friendship. And if they really are a good friend, they're gonna stay that way. And if they're not, then that's okay. You did yourself a favor by not wasting your time. Even though it hurts in the short run, you win in the long run. This next one comes from a girl. And she doesn't give her name, so that's just fine. She says, hey, Pete, I need some advice. I'm a girl, 
in a friend group consisting of both boys and girls. My friends are great people, but we're all about 14, so everybody's hormonal, which to me means you're all wacky. My point is, everyone sometimes uses me as a punching bag when we're together. Privately, they're really nice and cool, but as a group, no matter what I do, they just roll their eyes, make a comment about how dumb and stupid I am. I usually try to stand up for myself in these situations. I've talked to a few people about it, meaning your friends, but no one seems to really care. Okay, dear punching bag, I'm going to put this as straightforward as I can. You need new friends, because guess what? They're not. All right? They may be nice, but that's all they are. They're just nice. But when they get in a group and they start, basically what I'm hearing is they're bullying you by verbally beating you up and putting you down to make themselves look better or smarter. Those aren't friends. And they're certainly not doing you any good other than probably messing with your self-esteem, like you're no good or you are dumb. And you're not. You reached out to me and that right there tells me you're pretty smart because they didn't. So I'm going to tell you, new friends. You think they're friends, but they're not. And that's, I'm just shooting straight with you. All right, next one. And here's where we turn to a little more serious topic. And this is what I would just call uh, the divorce topic. And I know as I read through a lot of emails, unfortunately, many of you have had to deal with having gone through a divorce or your parents look like they're getting one or they are getting one. Either way, it's ugly. Let's go ahead and read this one. No name mentioned. Hey, Pete, my parents are about to get a divorce and I'm not sure how to handle it. As I write this email to you, my mother is in the other room screaming at my dad to get out of the house. I'm really concerned for them and I don't know how to handle this. Can you help me? Wow. Here's a couple of thoughts I jotted down based on my experience, some things I've read, as well as talking to some people. First and foremost, if you're a person of faith, pray. I, I will never diminish the power of prayer. First and foremost, pray. Pray for them, pray for your family, pray that God would certainly lead you in, in a wise way how to handle this. That said, next I would say keep the peace. You don't want to be an instigator where you jump in on one side and you side with one of the parents over the other parent and. That, that's not going to help. Just the opposite. In this situation, you want to be the peacemaker. Next, you want to be fair. And by fair, you really need to not take sides. This is out of your control. And so in the midst of the situation, you can't jump in and, and defend mom or defend dad or accuse mom or accuse dad. You can't. You've kind of got to let them grow up and in this situation, I'm telling you the truth when I say often the parents act more like little children than you do and your friends. I'm telling you, they do the, the wildest, horriblest things and say the most hurtful things because they're deeply hurt. Stay in touch with both parents at, at, at all times. So whether it's mom who moves out or dad moves out, stay in touch. Just because mom or dad have separated and or divorced, it doesn't mean you are separated or divorced. Yeah, there's distance there with one of them, but you need to make the effort. You need to keep that relationship going because down the road, it's going to pay. It's going to pay. Next point, make this thing work. And by that, I mean, you've got to spend time. So, so make it work. They're going through the, the super toughest time of their lives, and it is the super hardest time in your life. So, in that situation, as a peacemaker, as somebody who's not going to take sides, but as somebody who's going to still love each of them, you need to go ahead and spend some time with them and love them because, trust me, they need that love just like you need their love. Next, um, 
this is tough. This is tough. You need to kind of sort of talk about the future. If they get to the end of the road and they go ahead with that divorce, everybody needs to, to get a clear picture of what this is going to look like. So you guys can begin to work on a very workable relationship with everyone. So not talking about it doesn't solve anything, just the opposite, it hurts. All right, last point. You can take steps now to share this with your family. Maybe you have a great uncle, an aunt, a grandparent, but share it with them and talk to them, as well as maybe one or two friends. I wouldn't go looking all around school and telling everybody, just a couple of your close friends. Turn to them, talk, they'll support you if they're really your friend. Same thing with your family members, your aunt, your uncle, grandpa, grandma, talk to them. They know your parents. And that's the kind of support you want to establish during this time. So definitely you wanna pray during this time. Definitely you wanna be a peacemaker. You wanna be fair. You wanna stay in touch with them no matter what. You wanna make it work even if they can't, prove that you can. You wanna talk about what expectations to have in the future and of course support. You need a support group. So that's a tough email, it's a serious one. It's near and dear to my heart since I went through it. But the good news is, even if you know, you've gone through this and you come out the other side, I want to challenge each and every one of you to make a commitment to yourself, a promise that you will never break and cause this kind of hurt and harm to your future family. No matter what you go through, that kind of commitment will speak volumes about you and it will speak volumes to your future family. So there you go. Well, I hate to end on a serious note. Have we got a, a lighter note to end on? How strong do you think like your grip is? Could you squeeze like a watermelon just like by squeezing it and just explode it? <laughs> if Pete could chuck wood, would he chuck wood faster than a woodchuck could? Jack, what do you say? All right, I've been asked that question a number of times. Next question. So, uh, so if I saw a stingray, I'm just gonna park over here temporarily. <laughs> okay. All right, let me ask you this question. Okay. So I just wanna say thank you to all of my friends and fans tonight for coming out for Dad Talks. I really appreciate each and every one of you for putting up with our Dad Talks. Yeah, thanks Dad for sharing. That was awesome. Love ya. <laughs>